Hi guys, thank you for having me on. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, David, for having me over on Cake Flicks. Um, I'm really excited about this. Uh, I'm Zoe from Zoe's Fancy Cakes, and today we're going to be making a little giraffe. So we're just going to be making it out of modeling paste. Um, I'm going to be mainly using like it pre-coloured, pre-dyed. Um, so I'm going to use the Saracino. Oh, Saracino, I never know if I say it right. Uh, I'm going to use yellow, a tiny bit of brown. I'll probably use a little bit of black and white as well. So it's fairly hard when we first start with it. Although this one actually is softer than usually. Usually it's so hard that I have to stick it in the microwave for a few minutes, but this one's not too bad. So when you first get it, it'll be a little bit crumbly. It'll look like this kind of consistency and you're just going to knead it until it becomes more like chewing gum. So just keep kneading this. In fact, I've kneaded some earlier. My hands are freezing, so because I've got cold hands, it does take me a little while to knead the paste. If you've got hot hands, what you might find is that it becomes very soft very quickly. It also becomes fairly sticky, so if it is sticky, just put a little bit of corn flour on the palms of your hands just to stop it sticking. Okay, and once it's more like chewing gum, we've got it at the right consistency. If you've got hot hands and it feels very soft, just put it down and leave it to go back to room temperature for five minutes before you work with it. Okay, so the one I made earlier is fairly big, fairly tall. I think it took me about an hour because it took me longer than I thought to stick on its little spots. Um, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and I'm just keeping my paste in a bag to stop it drying out. So I've taken a ball that's just a little bit smaller than I used on that one. So let's see how much I used. Just make sure as well that you're rolling it so you've not got creases and cracks in the outside. If you've got a crease or crack, it's usually that you've not kneaded it enough or that you've not put enough pressure on it when you're rolling it. So let's see how much that is. About 55 grams. If it's not the same size as mine, don't worry. It doesn't matter. So my hands are actually a little bit tacky today. So first thing I'm going to do is I want to leave like a rounded bit for the bottom and then it gets sort of thinner as it comes further up the body. And obviously it's not anything like a realistic giraffe. But we're going for cutesy and easy to make, okay? When you go for more realistic, um, the legs need to be much thinner and it's much harder to offer it enough support for it to set quickly. So if I was doing something realistic, um, well, it probably wouldn't look that realistic by the time I'd finished it, but um, it would take me a long time. I'd probably have to swap to modeling chocolate and I'd have to build it like a proper internal structure or frame. So can you see we're going fairly slender for the neck? and really chunky for where the bottom's gonna be. And then I'm gonna bend it where I want the neck to be. Okay. I might get a little bit of crease in just at the back of the neck. I think this one can be the baby one. So it's a bit smaller than the last one I've done, but that's fine. Okay. Now, cause it's a little bit soft, what I'm gonna do is I'll just pop it to one side. I'll try and keep the neck fairly upright as well. If I have the neck leaning forwards, the weight of the head will bring the figure off falling forwards if we're not careful so I'll keep it fairly upright so we'll just put that to one side and let's make it some legs. A few people asking can you can you colour Saracino? Yes yes you can I'm just lazy. <laughs> yeah you can buy it in white and you can just add food colourings as normal so you can use like the gel colours the liquid colours um the powders you can even stick the powdered colours into it and it all mixes in absolutely fine. I just, I just get really lazy and I, and I always make such a mess that I get food colour everywhere. Um, so when I'm doing things, because, because I have a shop and I've got all this in anyway, it's always there to hand for me. So it's easy for me to just pick up the colours off the shelf and it, it saves me all the time of colouring it. Also when I've coloured it, it becomes quite soft and then I have to put it down and leave it a while till it goes back to room temperature before I can use it again. Okay, so I'm just going to take a ball. This is far more than I need now for the legs. But I'll tell you how much it is anyway so that you know. But we're not going to need all of this, I don't think. So in this bit, I've got about 70 grams. For those of you that know Zoe, Zoe never weighs anything normally. No. But my paste is much stickier than normal. So usually what I find is like, it's nice because it's this is, these are brand new packs, so they're really fresh. Sometimes if I've had a pack a few months, it's a bit firmer. Um, so it's harder to work with it when it's firmer, but it means it's it's setting quicker. Whereas this one's not going to set quite as quick, which is why I need it to be a little bit smaller. Otherwise it won't hold its own weight. So 
I'm just rolling this out to the thickness that I want the legs to be. Now, because this one's a baby, I'm going to give it dumpier legs than the bigger one so that everything looks cutesy. I'm pretty sure in real life, baby giraffes don't have chunkier legs. They're probably skinnier, aren't they, in real life on a giraffe? Okay, so I'm just keeping going. This is still way too thick. And you usually find that whatever size you've got something in your hands, you think, oh, that's really thin, really small. And then when you put it against what you're doing, it, it just seems so big compared to what you thought. So let's just cut a small piece off. In fact, I'm going to put cut a piece off either end and work on either end of this. So its legs want to be fairly long. And I don't know if any of you guys watch my usual Facebook lives. I did a little reindeer once a while ago and it's actually made exactly the same way as this. Also, for the body parts it is anyway. Um, but it's just got much shorter legs and a shorter neck. But essentially it's the same thing that we're doing for the body. So you're saying you just need to stretch your reindeer? Yes, so the reindeer and change the colour of it and give it some spots and a few different bits and pieces. I'm just flattening, can you see the end for each foot? Okay, so like I say, I don't think any animal actually has a leg that's just that plain shape, but it's okay. So keep them nice and flat on there. Then the next thing I want to do is just check they're a similar thickness to each other. I think this one's a little bit thicker, so I'm just going to stretch that out. Again, let's compare. There's different lengths at the moment, but that's okay. I'm just going to make sure its legs don't end up as long as the other one, otherwise they're going to be too long. So I'm going to cut them to about here first. So I want them so they're a little bit shorter than my neck. So don't worry if it's not the same size as mine, but you don't want the legs quite as long. I mean, you can do them as long, but um, the thinner and longer they are, the, the more they're going to sink. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, they're still not exactly the same thickness, but that's fine. I'm going to cut a slight V down here so that they go across the body there. Just a little bit of one on the inside. Let's see if we can do it so it's going a mirror image on this one. Okay, just round off that end a little bit here. And I'll just pull it like that so this bit where kind of my finger is, that will stick against the body itself. Okay, now because it's fairly soft, what I think I might do is rather than sticking it on straight away, I might give it five minutes while we make the back legs, but that's where they're gonna stick on. Okay, I'm gonna give them five minutes to firm up. I don't wanna let them set, so don't leave them to one side for like several hours or till the next day because then they'll be too tough to push against the body. Okay, let's just round off these ends a little bit more and let's work on our back legs. So same kind of thing again, same thickness, same thickness-ish, and never get them quite the same. Oh, they're a little bit thinner at the bottom of where the foot is, but I can push that down again. Got people from all over the world again. Hi everyone, thank you for joining. Okay, so, see does it look similar? These ones I'm going to leave a tiny bit longer because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the top bit and create like a round chunky bit on the thigh. So let's hold this one against here so I can see the height. So it's going to kind of come to there. I don't know how difficult it is for you guys to see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put an indentation in slightly lower than where the body comes. So about here. Now I'm just going to use my finger, but if you think your fingers are a little bit bigger than mine and you struggle with your finger, just use anything that's a bit rounded, so like a modelling tool handle or paintbrush handle. Move that back over there a second. So I'm rolling it in a little bit at the back of the leg. It will weaken the leg at that point, so try not to go too thin. Let's try and get it matching on this one. Because today we're not using supports, are you and yours? No, I am. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna, um, you don't have to put internal supports in if you've got plenty of time. Oh look, one leg's much chunkier than the other. If you've got plenty of time to let them rest and set, but because they're not gonna have ages to set, <clears throat> I'm gonna put stuff inside them so that they've just got that extra bit of strength. So if anybody's gonna be eating this, you have to let them know that there's stuff inside. It'll be like cocktail sticks that we're gonna put in. So this bit here at the top, we want to kind of make a little bit more rounded. So it might not be the right, size straight away but can you see if I kind of flatten it so it's not too chunky this way and then round it here it's going to stick against the bum here so if it looks like it sticks out a lot there's quite a lot of volume there I'm going to cut a little bit of that off I'm going to cut it off a bit of a 
angle here and then we'll just re-round and re-flatten that top bit there like that okay so if I put that against there it does still stick out but it doesn't stick out quite as much and then I need to make this one match so I'm going to cut a little bit off the top first and then re-round it so this one the dips at the back this one the dips at the back but have it facing the opposite way if that makes sense I'm not very good at explaining that am I <laughs> hopefully you'll see what I mean in a minute because when they go against this flat bit will stick on the bum at either side so the bum would be in the middle okay so just try and get them so they look similar ish at the top yeah so they're gonna have five minutes to be firm enough while we then work on the head depending what kind of paste you're using is going to depend on how long you can leave your paste to one side so some pastes will dry fairly quick and then when you try manipulating them in sort of 10 minutes time they'll crack a bit on the surface so something with like a cocoa butter in like the serratino is, is quite good because it's not going to set too quickly like it'll start to firm up but it won't set quite the same so what i'm going to do is i think somebody's somebody's <laughs> come to deliver something to the shop that's what the noise is in the background um i'm just going to take a piece for the head and let's have a look at the size of it compared to the body. It's fairly big, but I guess if I want a baby cutesy one, it's going to be out of proportion and it wants to be big to be cute. Okay, let's see how much we've got. Number 31, about 30-ish grams is fine. Just make sure you've no creases and cracks. And then what I'm going to do is try and create a bit of a nose. So if I can, I'm just trying to pull just a tiny bit at the end. That way, man, into your eyes. See, so, yeah, it's the delivery yeah. man can't find ways to live in winter. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, oh, he shut the door really, really firmly then. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, can you see? I'm just pulling. So it's fairly pokey outy. So good with words. If you want to work on it like that, so that the bottom of the face is flat on the work surface, that's absolutely fine as well. Don't worry if it if it flattens under there. It doesn't matter too much for this one. Okay. I know they do have really long noses, but on this one, to keep it cuter and more cartoony, we're not going to pull it too long, okay? Then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to press it in slightly, so just above the nose area, we're going to push it in a little bit here, okay? And then I'm going to use my balling tool to put in a little indentation where I want the eyes to go. So I'll just press in lightly at first, so I think, yeah, about there and there. So just higher than this nose area. And I'm going to press in so it's more of an oval. I've lost that little bit where I pushed in now. So because it's fairly soft, it keeps sort of reshaping. So just be mindful of that. I should have really got myself a little polystyrene um, like flower cup that holds it round at the back. So this one might be slightly flattened at the back. Okay, so can you see we've got some little dips. Could even go deeper for the eyes. Oh, I've got pink dust on there. I was using pink dust earlier. So let's just go a bit deeper now with this smaller one for my eye sockets. Again, if you find it's very soft and you really are struggling to use it, just pop it and leave, pop it down, pop it to one side, leave it for five minutes, and then you can keep going back to it, okay? And you'll see I, I amend it all the time, like sometimes. I think it's all right and then I put it together and I'm like oh no that's not right so I'll squeeze the head a bit thinner or squash it so it's a bit shorter constantly changing my mind about it okay so let's give it a top and bottom lip so we're just going to use the pointy edge of the Dresden tool and I'm going to press across there so we've only got a small bit at the bottom then I'm going to take it around the side I've got a bit of fluff stuck in him okay and I've tried to curve it up slightly I'm just going to nip that bottom one so it's just a little bit thinner than the top. So here, can you see sort of the bottom bit of the chin is just slightly narrower than the top bit of the nose. And I'm just going to push in, can you see at the sides, at the very edge of that line that we put in, kind of slightly upwards so that it makes them look a little bit cheerier. Does it look a bit like he's smiling now? Ish. Well, your characters look like they're smiling. No, they don't. I make, some, <laughs> I, make, I make them look like they're a bit miserable sometimes. People always comment when I make them look a bit miserable. Okay, I just keep squashing those little eye sockets out, so just be careful when you're making yours for that. Okay, let's give him some little nostrils. 
just going to use the end of my dress and tool, but the, the thicker end this time. And I've kind of got it so the curve is inwards and the flat bit of it is outwards. I think I've gone a little bit lopsided there. And when you guys are doing this at home, don't rush it. You know, you don't have to do it in 45 minutes. You can take much longer over it if you want. Okay. Then I want a tiny bit of white for its eyes. So just a small bit. Now, when I was making the first one earlier, I couldn't decide whether I was just going to put sugar pearls in, in black. So if you stuck for time, um, just stick two large black sugar pearls in. And it did look all right. I just decided that it looked nicer with uh, a little bit more detail. And if you've got even more time, you can put color in the eyes. So these ones are just like white and black. But, it, oops, I've stabbed him in the cheek with my fingernail. Um, it would have looked quite nice if I'd have put like a colored iris on. Oh, it's way too big. So when you deciding on the size to fill the holes you're gonna have to roll a piece and hold it in there to see what it looks like that just sticks out a little bit too much and you'll just keep doing this until it fits sometimes you roll the perfect size straight away sometimes it takes you several attempts today's a several attempts one I think I think about that if you want to go bigger with them you can it's, it's just you don't want them to poke out the side of the head too much do you tend to find bigger eyes cuter smaller eyes not so cute yeah big eyes are usually cuter and make things look more baby like and then if they're smaller i mean they're still cute sometimes when they're small but yeah usually like if i'm doing an adulty figure the eyes might be a little bit smaller although i think it's the opposite way around on this one my other giraffe has got massive eyes <laughs> now because my paste is a little bit tacky i'm not worried about putting any water in there to hold it in place can you see i've just pushed it in it's just filled those spaces that we made earlier with the balling tool okay you can see my little fingernail mark so again just keep pressing until you're happy with that shape i just keep pushing it in a little bit more there so that it gives him bigger rounder cheeks then we want a tiny bit of black which i have got some black hidden over here somewhere again i'm just using modeling paste and usually someone asks um if you've got to use modeling paste you don't have to use modeling paste like you can use fondant with tylos um, I personally don't really get on with um, using fondant at all for my figures. I, I just, I'm not very good with how much Tylos or CMC you put in it and I'm not very good at waiting long enough for it to firm up. So it just depends what you're used to for this. In fact, let's see if we can change the size of this. Let's start with a ball and cut it in half. It still won't be even. <laughs> I never ever get two pieces that are the same size. I've got a tiny bit of white stuck in that as well, I think. Let's see. Now, I don't know if you guys can hear. Everybody's doing the gardening outside. You can hear people's strimmers <laughs> and lawnmowers in the background. I'm hoping you guys can't hear it too much. So once I've rolled a piece, it's like a little oval. Can you see I've squashed it a little bit? So it makes it much, much bigger in size. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push it into the white of my eye. I'm going to have it looking forward. If you want to go bigger, you can. Just try and put it in the same place in this one. So if it sticks to your finger instead of the model, then that's when I would probably have to just add a tiny bit of water. Or you can use edible glue. Um, water works okay for me. So I'm happy just using water, but I know some people prefer edible glue. So go with what you like best. Oh, it's my little cross-eyed giraffe. Then we want a little bit of white in each black bit. So you can roll a tiny, tiny ball of white if you prefer, but I'm going to just draw it in they are edible pens these but it just it's a bit quicker for me than trying to roll some tiny tiny bits you can add white two white dots but i think i'm going to leave it with just one usually i faff around for ages and i show you lots of different ways but i'm worried that i'll, I'll spend too long and i'll get cut off halfway through because i won't get it finished so I'm going 19 minutes thanks richard that's okay We've got our, all our main basic body parts done. The bit that actually took me a while earlier was sticking all the little um, brown bits on. I misjudged how long that was going to take and how many of them I was going to need. And it took me much longer than I thought. Okay, so I'm going to sit a small ball, much smaller than the eye. And I'm just going to put some corn flour on my hands actually because I know it's going to stick to me. I'm going to press it down to flatten it a little bit. And then we're going to cut it in half so that we get two little eyelids. And they will probably stick to my mat. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, let's put a tiny bit of water just at the top of each eye. And then let's see if we can pick this up. 
So this straight edge that we've just cut goes towards the bottom and the curve goes towards the top. Okay, and then I'm just going to nudge it round so it goes closer to the edge of the, the white so it looks like the oval sort of continuing to the uh, eyelid. Let's see if we can do the same on the other one. Ooh. And the straight edge on the bottom, you can either have it kind of level or sort of angled so it's going downwards at the outside edge, but if you do it the opposite way in the angle like this so that they go down in the middle, it tends to make them look a little bit angrier. You can have an angry giraffe if you want, no, that's fine. Um, this way tends to make them look a bit dopier, <laughs> but that's fine. I don't mind a dopey giraffe. Okay, so I'm also going to give it some eyelashes. So just a tiny bit of water along that bottom edge. Usually I do this if I've got quite a lot of water in the brush and I don't want so much water on the brush. I just dab it on my hand to get rid of some bits. A couple of people have asked, how yes. do you know where you put the whites in your eyes? Um, so the white is just the light reflecting. Usually like if I've got a human face and both eyes are facing forwards, I put the white in the same place. So like if it's on the right hand side of one eye, it would be on the right hand side of the other. Usually up near towards the top because it's where the light's reflecting. So when you, when you learn, I guess, art at school, you do about reflecting light. It depends where the light source is coming from. So if the light was coming from this side, my dots would be on this side. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's good. But I wouldn't overly worry about it too much, about where the light source is coming from. Usually I just go near the top. Because this one's eyes aren't exactly front facing, so they're kind of front facing kind of on the side, um, rather than having them both on like the right or the left, I've done them both on the outside. You probably do them both on the inside. Usually with that kind of thing, I would say play around, have a think about what you think looks best when you're doing it. Um, what I wouldn't do is put a white dot bang in the middle of the black, because it looks weird if it's right in the middle. It looks more like, instead of being a light reflection, it looks more like it's the pupil, but in white. Okay, so I want a tiny bit of black, not too much. And I'm gonna roll it so it's nice and thin at one end. So I've got way more than I need, but you'll see in a minute what I'm gonna do and why it doesn't matter if you've got too much. There's still only tiny pieces. And do the same with the other one. I want them to be kind of similar thicknesses. Can you see at the pointy end? And let's curve it around a little bit. The pointy end is just gonna go just past. Can you see that inside edge? It's really soft is my pace today. Okay, and then where it comes to the outside edge, we're going to kind of trim it off here. So a bit of an angle, diagonal, so we get a nice point. Just press firm enough that you know you've gone through the paste. And then you can flick it up if you need to, or if you, if you prefer it straight, leave it straight. But it looks quite nice. Can you see if it's got a little flick? If you want to move it away from the edge of the face so it sticks out more, you can do. I just, I sometimes catch it when I do that and it ends up breaking off. So again, see if we can carefully place it on there. And then I'm just gonna oops, see if I can bring that down there a bit more. I think I've maybe left this one a bit longer than the other one. That's by accident, <laughs> but it'll be fine. Again, we're gonna cut an angle. I'm not sure if I've cut all the way through. Ah, this one I've cut all the way through, but I've just put a bit too much water on, so it's sticking everywhere that the water is, so I'll just kind of dig that off with my with my knife. One's a bit longer than the other. Again, I'm not worried if they're not exactly the same on both sides. It's I know some people do get frustrated if it's not identical. For me, I don't worry about it too much because by the time I've faffed around trying to get it the same, I end up finding that I've made more of a mess than what I started with and actually if it wasn't that bad in the first place you might as well just leave it that sounds really lazy of me doesn't it but I do sometimes make more of a mess change you're not a perfectionist I'm well not always <laughs> not always a perfectionist if I'm making something just for me sometimes I do get frustrated when things aren't quite right but then I realised that actually, if I want to eventually finish things, then I have to not be a perfectionist, otherwise I just stick around to finishing things. Okay, so we need ears and bits and pieces like that, but what I'm going to do is I'll stick them on when it all starts coming together. So this feels, it's still quite soft actually, um, but it's a bit firmer. So if it feels very soft, don't rush to put yours together. 
what we're going to do is it's going to have a stick that goes through the neck through the legs and i'm going to actually build it on a piece of polystyrene you don't have to but if it's stuck in polystyrene it's just going to mean it's it's that bit firmer when it's set in so i'm actually going to swap to a slightly longer stick because i think by the time that's gone through that and the leg there's not going to be much left of it so we'll go for a nice long piece I'll just move that polystyrene to one side at the moment so what i want to do is have a look at where this comes so if i if that goes through the middle of my neck sorry my head's in the way again um i want it ideally to come through one of my legs okay so if your neck's like that it would have to go that angle and then my leg would be really far back so also it might topple as well so we're going to try and get it this way okay and i'm going to try and get it close to the front of the neck Again, if it's very soft, just be very careful. So can you see I'm twisting as I'm pushing this through? Because sometimes if I just push, it just kind of concertinas and squashes. Whereas if I twist it a little bit, it avoids it. Well, it sometimes still does it a little bit, but not too much. So I want it to come out, can you see, just slightly to the side rather than in the center? Which it has done slightly. I've come out quite close to the front, but I think it should be okay. And what we're going to do is that's going to go on there. So I'm going to pull this out of the way a second. I'm going to put a little bit of water on here where the leg's going to stick in place. And then we're going to push this onto there. It might just show a tiny bit of maybe just gone a tiny bit far forward with that. But hopefully it should be okay. So we're going to put that on here. And then we're going to start pushing this skewer now don't worry if they come apart a little bit there it's fine I'm just wanting to make sure that it's not going to come out of like the ankle or the front there we go so we've got that on there then i can push that up to meet the body somebody's asked what kind of sticks do you use for your supports uh, these are just wooden kebab skewers that you would put in like your barbecue kebabs and things yeah um, they're the bamboo ones, aren't they? Yeah, they're just bamboo ones. Yeah. Now, this one will look like a dinosaur when we, when it's partially made. Don't worry, it's fine. It does. You can, if things are fairly firm, you can get away with just this one stick. You don't have to put a stick in every leg. But because these are all quite soft, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of a stick into each leg. I'm not going to worry about it being a thick stick for the other ones. What I'm going to do is on the other ones, I'm just going to use a little bit of a cocktail stick in the others. So I'm going to push it in. So remember your front ones are these ones that have that shape. The back legs are these ones with the big round bit on. I'm going to push it till it hits the bottom because I only want one bit to go into the polystyrene. Otherwise, it's going to make it difficult for me to get it out. Oops. If I hold that there, now I could get away with pushing that fully in if I know that all that stick is going to go into the neck. But quite often when I push it in, I end up pushing it at an angle and the stick comes out here. So I'm going to cut this a little bit shorter. So that it's in the body, but it's not too far into the body. It will probably come out the bottom. So I'm just going to hold my finger there. Oh, can you see I've squashed the leg a tiny bit? So I'll just stretch it. In fact, I forgot to put water on. So a little bit of water or glue, if you prefer. Let's push that onto there. And give it a good firm press here. So like I say, it's a little bit soft at the moment. You can give it a bit longer to set on yours. Try and push it so there's not a gap in the seam. Like I'm not going to get rid of my seam. Like you are going to see that seam on this. If you're using, well, you can actually rub the seam out with this, but I was going to say, if you're using um, modeling chocolate, it's sometimes easier to rub seams out. I actually, on the cartoony ones, I don't mind seeing a bit of a seam. As long as it wasn't like joint somewhere that it, that leg wouldn't be joint like halfway up the neck. I wouldn't want the seam up there. You've also got only a certain amount of time today. Yeah, sorry, I'm faffing on a bit too long. Okay, so same again with these ones. You can add a little bit of a stick into each one if you think it needs that extra support. These ones are much softer because they're much thinner at the top. So that's what you want to watch out for on these ones. So this time, instead of going from the very top, you're just going to go from this bit here. So can you see where it starts to come out big and rounded? And then we're going to push this down. I can feel that I'm squashing that leg a little bit, so... Maybe just stretch that out a tiny bit. Okay, again, we're going to cut it. So there'll be a tiny bit sticking out that will go into the body, but not too much. So let's put water on here. 
and then let's work out so it's going to go about there so I'm going to push it here and then we're going to press down okay just if you've got him on his side like I have be careful how hard you press because can you see I'm going to flatten that side it's like slightly longer than the front one so I'm just going to nudge it up a bit definitely feels very soft still this I can tell when it is really fresh paste it's so much softer it is still fine like don't worry if yours is soft it just needs that bit longer drying time wise which obviously I haven't given mine yet so just a quick reminder as to what you make <laughs> it's a giraffe okay yeah so it's a giraffe we're making I realize it does look like a dinosaur it's you can't tell too much at the moment but even when I stick the head on it looks like a dinosaur. In fact, it looks like a blue dinosaur I made on the on my YouTube channel ages ago. This one. But like I say, you, a lot of your a lot of your figures can be adapted, mm -hmm. can't they? So yeah, this could be like say a reindeer, it could be a dinosaur. Yeah, it's really the colour of it and the ears and things like the tail that you put on that change what it kind of looks like. So a lot of things start the same way, don't they? Yeah, with the four legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just make sure you put it on in about the same place. I think that one wants nudging up a bit more okay now if you're confident that it's pretty firm you don't have to have this sticking out the bottom you could stand this up on its own without it going into polystyrene because mine's soft I'm not confident that it's going to stand up on its own so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it into the polystyrene oops I think I've pushed it in at an angle so oh no it's because my stick's at a bit of an angle so I need to push it in that way like that I'm going to push it all the way to the bottom just so that I know that the polystyrene is holding it in place I can see a tiny bit my stick is probably just a tiny bit long there so I can just about feel it so I'm gonna have to keep an eye out on that I'm just gonna pull the legs out that way like so so we've got our basic bit of body now we don't want too much stick out of the top of the head now ideally you'd want to leave this a bit longer now to set because when we put the head on there's that bit of extra weight on the neck so not too much at the top maybe like a centimeter or so at the top and then what I want to do is try and bring this bit at the top of the neck. I don't know how well you guys can see this. I'm going to just apologise for the, uh, the mess of your workspace. What? Not everybody works messy. <laughs> I think. Does everybody else work messy? Am I the only one that works really messy? Do you know when I'm on classes, I always say to the students, tidy up your workspace. You can't work when it's messy. It is true, actually. If you've got a really nice, clean workspace, it's much easier because... By the time you've finished, you end up with all sorts everywhere and yeah, it's just really difficult. So the head will sit on here. So I've kind of dipped it. Can you see? So it's going to come up and this bit is going to go onto the back of the head. So it's a little bit flat on the back of the head, but that's okay. I'm going to try and put it fairly close to the back of the head and we're going to push it on carefully because it hasn't had very long to set at the moment. Can you see? It looks like a dinosaur. It looks like a diplodocus. Is it? <laughs> I don't know, but I know what you mean. <laughs> the ones with your long necks so and get the name of everything wrong. Say that again. No. <laughs> I'm not saying it again. You can either leave it facing forward or you can tilt its head. If you're tilting its head, try and sort of tick the neck and twist the neck as well at the same time. Or you could you could even have it looking up or down. But if you have it looking up, the problem is you sometimes see like the seam under the neck here. So by having it kind of looking straight ahead or down slightly, you're going to cover that. You can see he's got a bit of an odd little eyelash there where it's just curled a bit too much. He or she, whichever one it is. I don't know which one it is yet. I'm gonna, you could even have it twisting all the way around, couldn't you? I don't know. can't decide. No, I'm leaving it there. Leaving it there like that. So you now need to watch again how much pressure you're putting on there. So this needs its little horns and things putting in. Um, I don't know what they're called. What are they called? Does anybody know what those bits are called? Are they horns? No, they're not. They're the thing next to the ears. Yeah, the little stubby bits that come out the top it's of its head. It's not an antenna. So what I'm going to do is up near the top of the head, I'm going to press two holes in that we're going to slot them into. So don't have them like right next to each other, but don't go too far out either because my ears are going to come at the sides of these. So I don't know. Can you guys see that there? No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is just before I stick them in, I'm going to roll some yellow for my ears. Um, I'm going to just use a heart shaped cutter for the ears as well, because it's going to save me a bit of time. So you don't need to go overly thin with this and I don't need too much paste because they're fairly small, the ears. Okay. It's about this kind of thickness. <laughs> no, I don't know, a millimeter or so. And I want, mm, 
I'll try this size cutter. If it's the wrong size, it only takes a second to re-roll it. Oh, this cutter's not a very good cutter. It's left me with scruffy edges. But we want that basic heart shape. And then what we do is we just kind of fold it. Can you see at the fat end like that? That's all we need to do. Then I want a bit of water just slightly further down from that hole. And I'm going to press that on the side there. Can you see what I'm doing? Are yeah, you watching yeah. what I'm doing, Richard? Sorry, guys. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing too well. Richard's playing around with the camera. So I'm having it set kind of faces like out or down. I suppose you could have it upwards. I just thought it looked cuter if they were outwards or downwards. So I'm just going to cut another heart the same. Again, just watch for... It's not very good, that one. I think it's a really old cut, that one. And again, just fold in half at the fat bit. And then a bit of water just further down from that hole. And just press press on like that and it's much nicer if you have a better cutter than i do that doesn't leave a scruffy edge and i think it's probably a really cheap one i shouldn't say that i don't buy cheap things anymore but when i first started some of my cutters and things i bought like someone said oh just buy really cheap ones and stuff off amazon and the fine and i've still got some of them but they they're not they're really rubbish to be fair are the cheap ones um like as you can see they don't give you a very good edge i put that away and i still need the yellow okay so tiny tiny bit of water sort of in the holes somebody's asked what did you use to make the holes in your head uh i used a serrat k2220 there you go yeah i usually use this for nostrils sylvia mancini introduced me to this but you can use anything that that makes a hole it's fine okay so two small little pieces again size wise we'll see see what they look like when we put them in we're going to roll them to a teardrop and we're going to push the thin bit into the hole and leave the chunky bit out the top i think these bits are what make it start to look a bit more like a giraffe rather than a dinosaur that and the ears i guess the dinosaurs don't have the ears do they but until that point it looks like a little dinosaur so now we need to add the bits that are going to make it look a little bit more giraffe-like. I've got most of the body parts. It's still going to need a tail, but I'm going to put the hearts on first before the tail. And I'm going to just put a tiny bit of dust in on. I'm going to move these out of the way. This is where I start knocking everything over because I have so much rubbish out. So I did actually cut out some hearts in advance because earlier I realised it was taking me a lot longer than I thought it was going to for that. I'm going to use a bit of brown. So just a little bit of brown um, edible dust. Okay, so on the brush, just dab off all the extra. Oh, I've got a bit much on there. And I'm just going to dust it so it catches on the nose. I didn't give this one a tongue, did I? You gave that last minute. To your, oh. your you own. shouldn't blow them on, on your fingers, by the way, guys. So are you. You're not on any camera. Now. I'm not on any camera. Perfect there, yeah. Thanks. It's all right. Okay, so mainly catching the nose with the dust. Okay, and then I'm going to bring it slightly up the middle, like that. Okay, then I want to catch the ends of these. Can you see it's very soft at the moment, it's moving around. You don't have to worry about dusting straight away. You can give this a little bit longer. I'm going to just put a little bit on the ears. I've probably got a bit too much dust on my brush, which is why it's dropping on everything. Again, you don't have to put it on the ears, but I just thought it looked nice. Okay. So, that's the brown one done for the time being. Let me see if I put anything different on this one. Nope, it's fine. It has got smaller eyes, actually, this one than the other one. Yes. You have... It's got a much fatter face as well. Just a bit of a time check. You've got about seven, eight minutes. Oh, is that all I've got? Right, okay. So next, we want to start sticking on some dots or hearts. I went for hearts, you can go for dots, go for whatever you fancy. <laughs> just really thin, some brown, somebody said and you're just going to cut them out. Somebody said, are you putting pink dust on it? Uh, on its cheeks, I was going to put some pink on its cheeks. For anybody that watches any of our other videos, that's a bit of an in-house joke, because Zoe adds pink to everything. No, I don't. <laughs> you do. I don't. Sometimes I don't add pink. I, this one didn't have pink, and then Richard said, aren't you going to put pink on it? So that's the only reason it had pink cheeks, this one. Okay, so I'm just going to put these on. What you want to concentrate on is having bigger ones, 
near sort of the middle of the body and then they're going to get a bit smaller as we come further out okay i'm probably not going to stick all of these on because i don't want to run out of time and find that i didn't finish the uh, giraffe itself so i'm going to concentrate on just putting them down one side to start with so it'd be the same down the neck so you put some down the back of the neck as well i don't want too many on the front of the neck or the bottom halves of the legs okay let's put another one there can you guys still see what i'm doing yeah. okay. so we're going to get some slightly smaller ones as we come down the leg a little bit oops and this one stuck to my hand the thinner you can roll these the better because on my first one i did they, they just poke out a little bit too much from the side a bit chunky it's yes, coming together Okay, and you can spend she's much longer than me on these. She's quite a daddy giraffe. Like it's a girl. Is it's a mummy giraffe. giraffe. Yes. Oops, that one didn't stick to anything but me. Why are they not sticking? So sometimes they just don't stick. I've only got a tiny bit of water on my brush, but it should be fine. So can you see we'd go up there? You can put some on the face if you want. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to move on to the next bits just so that you guys can see the overall thing just because I will get carried away with adding these hearts and before you know it I'll run out of time. So and do I add him a tongue? Guys, should I add him a tongue or not? What do you all think? You need a tail. Yeah, email? I'm going to do the tail. Good. He's going to get the tail. Okay, let me move that to one side. Can you still see what I'm doing if I do things yeah, here? Yeah, back onto that. Camera. Okay, so tail. You see my brown's been in the bag a little, a little bit so it's started to firm up. The brown is much, much tougher than the, uh, than the yellow. So I want a little teardrop for the end of its tail. This the end of the tail is massive compared to that one. Let's go a bit smaller. I wish I'd given it bigger eyes now. But at least you guys can see the difference between like when they've got big eyes and small eyes. So you can decide which one you prefer for when you make one. So teardrop shape, we're just going to put some lines down it so it looks more like hair. We've had a yes for the tongue. Yes for the tongue, okay, and we'll give it a tongue. Um, tongue just... You need to put a little bit on the top of his head. This thing. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not up to that bit just yet. I will do it. I'll get there. Okay, um, let's just darken the end of the tail because sometimes it doesn't show against the... I was going to say spots. Technically, they're not spots. Are they when I've put hearts on? Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of black dust just on the end of that tail there. So don't give it any even coverage, keep it darker at the end. I'm going to put this on, so a bit of water. I'm going to stick it onto its hind leg there. Because if I try and stick it up, it's going to need loads of extra support and things, and it's going to make it a lot more difficult for me. So I'm going to go with ease and something that's a bit more sturdy. And you have a few minutes. And I only have a few minutes. <laughs> okay. So like a little carrot shape, we're going to stick it to the bottom here. And then we're going to bring it round and stick it to... I'm going to try and stick it to the teardrop there. Okay. Then let's put this bit down the back of the head and then we can always go back to adding um, extra dots. So a bit of water so between those little two forget, stubby bits and down here. Dust. And if I've got time, I'll put pink dust on. Oh, and a tongue, a pink tongue. Okay, so this bit. Again, my brown is so hard. Let's see if I can warm it up between my hands. It might have a few cracks in where I'm just rushing to do it but spend longer kneading yours than I have done. Okay, so, again, this is massive. This one's gonna have long hair, like a long carrot shape. And what I'm gonna do is press it on one side. Try not to get cracks in yours. Okay, let's put some lines. Again, you can spend much, much longer than I am doing. You can tell quite, <laughs> I'm now feeling the pressure of not much time. So you would put these on both sides. Like say, I'm not going to do too much because I don't have time. Can you see that there? Yeah, yeah. This chunky end is going to go at the top between like a little mohawk, mohican, and then the thin bit's going to come down and around the back. This one's much bigger than what I put on the other one. That's Again, cool. that's fine. She's growing out his hair. Yeah, and then just make sure you're pressing it on nice and tight. So normally again, wait till everything's firmed up before you put this on because when I'm putting the pressure on this, I'm going to be squashing down the head and the neck and pretend I didn't do this. <laughs> right, pink tongue. Yeah, a little bit of shade in there. I think if we run over a couple of minutes, we might be okay. Oh, I was doing my best to finish on time. 
Well, you've got about 20 seconds then. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, just a little sausage piece flattened. Let's put a little bit of water on it. And let's see if we can get it between sort of the, the two lips. And then we'll curl it around so it's kind of going up its, up its nose a bit. But yeah, up its nostril. And then, did you want pink? Pink and a little bit of dust just to add to finish him off. Yeah. Where did you want more dust? Oh, I put little dots on, didn't I? On that last one. So just a tiny bit of pink. Can you see under each eye? If you've got water all over, you figure though this will kind of catch in the water and go a little bit blotchy. And then yeah, I used a smaller brush. This is actually one that I don't know how it's got like that. I think it's just been damaged from use in the classes. But actually, I've kept it because it's quite good in that I can just put dab on little smaller bits with it. In fact, I could have even mixed this hand, with some alcohol. So we're just putting the odd little little dot on in between. I realise this one doesn't look as nice, but because um, I haven't spent very long on the hearts. But can you see just anywhere where there's a bit of a gap or I wanted smaller ones, but I don't have a smaller heart shaped cutter. I then just put little dots. Well, I say you can build it up, can't you say? Yeah. Somebody said it looks like a yeah, giraffe version of Bambi. <laughs> it does a bit, doesn't it? And add a bit of brown anywhere that you want. I could have actually put pink inside its ears, couldn't I? <laughs> you could add some more pink. Yeah. A little few dots on its cheeks. You should give everything freckles, but I guess my giraffe doesn't really need freckles because it's got dots everywhere anyway. Okay, maybe even just a bit brown eyeshadow, just above the eye. There we go. And obviously you can spend much longer doing the dots or hearts and you don't have to use hearts. Like I did actually get diamond shapes and square shape cutters out to use. And then I thought, no, it's going to look cute with hearts. So that's why I went for the hearts. So that's it. All finished. Thank you ever so much for watching guys. And um, thank you ever so much for having me on Cake Flicks. It's been a pleasure. Thank you guys. Bye.